Alright, I'm gonna be doing a rig tune. This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. So the first thing we need to do is loosen the backstay adjuster. So have it all the way eased. That way the mast is in its neutral position. So now we're gonna check and see exactly where the mast head is in relation to the rest of the spar. So your mast head is, you know, up in space. You have no actual point of reference to it. So how can you tell how's it doing fore aft? Well, you can't by just looking at it, but you can use geometry to figure it out. So, parallel lines, they're your friend. So all you need to do is take the halyard and run it down, connected to something pretty heavy. Okay, the next thing to do is to check and make sure that the mast head is centered midship over the boat. So again, you use your weight to hoist it up a little higher so it's above your sail that's stacked. It should hang directly behind the mast. That means that the mast head is directly overhead and directly over the mast step. The goal is to get everything nice and straight and in a line. If your weight, for example, is hanging, you know, over here, your uh, mast head's a little too far to starboard. So the reason we're doing all this work right now of just checking everything is because we have to get the mast head centered. So as you can imagine, there's two ways to tune your rig. One is bottom up and the other is top down. Both work. I prefer top down because if you get the mast head set, then everything is just a matter of getting it in column from there. If you go bottom up, you have to make sure that you get the lowers set to be perfect and that the lowest portion of the mast is directly over the mast step. And then you have to do that every time on your way up. So each time you have to make sure that you're getting the mast straight up because if it's not straight up, you're gonna make the mast straight to one side or to the other. And there's so many more times that you have to check it and so much more uh, potential for error that I prefer top down because top down is you get the mast head centered and then you just worry about getting the wonks out of the mast. That's it. So it's just a matter of simplicity. Both work, both get the job done. It's just a matter of choosing one that you like and being really good at that method of doing it. So being how our mast head is centered athwartship, so side to side, we know that we don't actually have to do anything with the cap shrouds because they're okay. Now, last time we went out sailing, eh, the middle of the mast was uh, special. So it, the lowers and the check stays and stuff, they need some adjusting. To tighten your head stay, there's two ways of doing it. One is tighten the back stay, and that'll pull the mast back, which then tightens your head stay. But we like where the mast head is, so I don't want to actually pull it back any further. So therefore, I'm going to tighten the head stays. So that way the mast stays in the same position, just the head stay is tighter. So if you notice up here, we have a turnbuckle, and we don't have cotter pins in it. The reason is very simple. Cotter pins get hooked on stuff. The legs get snagged, and they bend or break off, and then the pin falls out, and then they don't do anything. So instead of cotter pins, I use seizing wire, and I just wrap it through, and that's it. Everything is held together and no snags. Now ideally, you should have a wrench that's big enough that can fit over the side of the body of the turnbuckle. And you wanna turn it by this area here, like this big flat surface, that's what you wanna grab onto to turn it. I don't have a wrench that big on the boat, so this is the wrong way to do it, but it also works. Now a really common question that I'm always asked is, how tight do you make them? Like, this is not bar tight. This is not a metal beam that can't be moved. This is some wiggle. Now compare that to the inner force stay, which I haven't tightened yet. Too much wiggle. So the answer to how tight is, it depends on many things. But generally you want them as loose as you can possibly have them because looser is less stress on the rig, which means less things to break. Now, that doesn't mean make them super loose because that's not good. So depending on what the stay is, so cap shrouds have to be tight and the head stay has to be tight if you wanna to go to windward. Downwind sailing, you actually want a looser head stay, that way it bows out. So being how we have a back stay adjuster, I don't set the head stay to be as tight as possible because I can always tighten it just a little more but then down when we have that great head stay sag that just pushes the head stay out and everything's good to go. So 
that's pretty much what it comes down to. Like for example here, this the cap shrouds are in good shape. They're you know nice and tight. A little too loose if you ask me. So that's that's what it comes down to. You want to set them either if you have manufacturer's specs, follow those. Do what the manufacturer says they want your rig to be, and you'll be good to go. If there are no manufacturer's specs because you have an old boat or a custom boat or just whatever, they you lost them. Anything. You want to start with the cap shroud being the tightest, the forward lower being the next tightest, so second tight or second loose, and then this one, obviously not this loose, but the aft lower be the loosest. That's how you set them up. And if you have intermediates, the intermediate goes slightly looser than the cap shroud, but still pretty tight. That's pretty much it. So then when you go out and you go for a sail, that's when you actually test it and you see how well does it work. If the mast is bending, then you know wherever it's bending away from, that stay needs to be tighter. Stays only pull, they never push. So you can't loosen the leeward side to fix the windward side. That's not gonna do anything. So you need to check both tacks, make sure the mast is in column, which means that when you look at it straight from the front, it goes straight up. You're at your mast and you look straight up at the masthead and you wanna see it straight ahead of you. If I ain't gonna lower, you'll see the mast will flex to the side. So when you're sailing, if you see your mast is flexing, you know, you gotta fix it. If everything's straight in column, you're good to go. So that's the, the general rule of thumb. As loose as possible to get the mast in column so that way you can sail safely and, and effectively. Okay, both head stays are set. Now it's time to come back here and take care of this way too slack rigging. Now, before you do that, you wanna make sure that the mast is bent backwards. It needs to have a curve backwards, otherwise your mast could break, and really soon. It's really bad, and there's actually a boat in this anchorage that has one, and the mast is like arced forward. It's called an inversion. It's really bad, really bad. So the way you avoid that is have enough backstay tension. So being how we just added headstay tension, we need to make sure that we're not causing an inversion. So you look up the side of your mast, and you should see it arc back. Now being a cutter, we have an inner force stay that pulls on the front of the mast lower than the mast head, so that helps prevent inversion. Another stay that really helps a lot with preventing inversion is called the baby stay. It's like uh, on boats with multiple spreaders, it'll be at the first spreader. So it's really low, it's a tiny stay, and all it does is pull the mast forward to give it forward prevent. That's all. If you don't have any of those stays, you are completely reliant on your forward lower to pull the middle section of your mast forward. So make sure they're tight because if they're loose, the mask can just snap forward and it's, it's really bad. So don't, don't do that. So now we're gonna get these guys that are like super slack here, tightened up. So I just tightened our check stays and now I'm gonna look again. So I just put my chin at the bottom of the mast, like up against it. Just look up. I'm going to lean back. Keep looking up. You just make sure that the mast looks like it's in column the whole way up. If you see it, you know, wonking or asses or C bends or anything like that, you're not done. So for example, for you guys, I just loosened this one again. So it's really loose. The other side's really tight and you can look at the mast and see how it's going to have a little bit of a bend to it. So as it goes up just past the spreaders, the section from the spreader to the masthead, it arcs a little to the left. And then if we look down here, this portion arcs this way and then past the spreaders, it's got an S bend going the other way. That's all because that check stays too loose. So we'll tighten that guy again and the bend will come out. So that's pretty much it. You just wanna tune it until it's perfect and then you go down the next level. So I, the cap shrouds are fine. So now I'm doing the check stays. After the check stays, then we go down and we do the lowers. It's just one step at a time, all the way down. Now with the lowers, you have four lowers to do. You have the forward lowers and the aft lowers. You do the forward lowers first. The aft lowers are last. That's all. Everything else is just in sequential order, top to bottom. Okay. Much tighter and completely straight and most importantly 
good and tight as well. So the check stays actually act as back stays and shrouds, and they're kind of like the do it all for the inner four stay. So they're really important because that supports our storm plan. Now, super important. After tightening the cap, the check stays, you want to make sure that your mask still has that your mask still has the right amount of bend to it because before you had the inner four stay pulling unopposed, so it's going to have a lot of bend to it. Now it's being opposed by the check stay, so it's going to be a little straighter. So you want to make sure that you still have the right amount of bend and that you didn't pull it into an inversion. So now that that's done, we're going to tie off the knots. If you're interested in synthetic standing rigging, there is a very long and detailed video on how to tie the knot that I'm going to do right now. It takes about 20 minutes, so if you're not interested in that, that's why we're not including it right now. Uh, but I'm going to tie that off and then I'm going to do the forward lowers and then the aft lowers. We're just going to tighten everything up, get the mast perfectly tuned and ready to sail for tomorrow. There's a link down below and you want to click on it because the first 1,000 people to click on that link will get a free trial membership of Skillshare Premium. Don't miss out on this super cool offer. Charlie, what you doing? I'm doing woodworking. Charlie, you suck at woodworking. Well, where should I get some classes? Have you heard about Skillshare? I have not. Skillshare offers a ton of classes online, including woodworking. Hmm, this is okay, interesting. What else do they teach? Swimming? Swimming, you say? Bring. I don't think swimming was for me. What other lessons do they offer? I want to know because I'm a bird. I've been taking painting lessons. Mm -hmm. I do like art and I love brushes. Yes, brushes, yes. Mm. So check out Skillshare for all kinds of new knowledge and hobbies. Yes, they have online courses and you can sign up by following the link in the description down below. Where? Yes, we birds. <laughs> so by signing up for Skillshare with the link in the description down below, you can get it for super cheap and, and most importantly of all, you learn so much. I mean, think about it. If you like using YouTube videos to learn things, imagine a place that's actually set up for learning. You get online courses and you can learn exactly what you want to learn. Like for example, my human loves all their photography courses. He's looking at all the ones about taking pictures and videos and all sorts of weird stuff. It's like, what are you doing? Why are you looking at so much camera things? What are your intentions with these cameras? So be sure to click on the link in the description down below. That way you get the best price. Because why pay more for learning when you don't have to pay more for learning? I'm a bird and even I know that. Yes. Thanks for watching this episode of Sailing Wisdom. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next Rigging Doctor episode. And if you're interested in even more Rigging Doctor awesomeness, consider becoming a patron to see all of our extras. Can't wait to see you next time as you join us out here on the high seas.